Good morning. It is 9.06 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. We have a jam-packed show for you today, and it all starts right now. Congressman Tim Burchett is on the Newsmakers Hotline. Uh, Tim, I told my producer right before he answered the phone, I said, it's pronounced Burchett. <laughs> Burchett. I know, I know. I'm joking. I'm joking. He gave me a compliment last time for saying it correctly. Yeah. That's all right. You're all right. I forgive you. <laughs> so, all right, you're 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 heading to a vote today uh, for on the rule for providing consideration uh, of the foreign aid bills, then assuming that rule passes tomorrow, you guys are going to vote on foreign aid? Yeah, I'm not sure if the rule will pass or not. Um, and then if it doesn't, another process comes under. You know, I, I keep saying vote these bills individually. That's why we're $35 trillion in debt, because everybody just gets their little portion and then, you know, then lets the other other several trillion dollars slide and that's what will happen today unless we take down this rule and i really don't know how that's going to go so it's been a, it's been a wild week a, as it comes to you guys and speaker mike johnson and then these foreign aid bills can you kind of walk me through what the progression has been these past couple of days because it seems like the news cycle has been moving at lightning speed uh when it comes to what you guys are doing yeah um so the way it works is you know, most people are, are kind of fed up with all this. We, we're not doing anything for our own border. And that that horrible Senate bill, that so-called bipartisan Senate bill, it took 5,000 people had to come over the border before it was activated every day. So, I mean, you know, that's just a joke. And with the, the media keeps saying this bipartisan bill, the strongest bill, it was strong if you were an attorney because that's what it did. I hired a bunch of attorneys. Um, to uh, allow these people into the country illegally. So we, so now we, we've denigrated, I guess, into funding for all these other countries' borders. We can't fund our own border. So what do we do? We're over there, Ukraine, going to give them another $60 billion. We don't know where the other $114 billion went. And it just goes on down the line. And then Israel is, is in there. I think they get 16 or $17 billion in this thing. So it, to me, it's just a um, we just we just rolled over, and I you know is this a beach to dawn? I think it is. We're thirty five trillion dollars in debt. Every dollar that we're sending overseas, guess what? We're borrowing it. We're borrowing it. And uh, who are we borrowing it from? Well, on the surface, about a trillion dollars now from the communist Chinese, but down deeper, it's just our grandkids or great grandkids. Um, their longevity, really. And so here we are again. We're going to put a ton of money overseas, and, um, and, and they're going to combine all the bills in the rules. So if we take down the rule, then it has to go through another process. I would probably lean towards taking down the rule and make people vote um, individually on these bills because, and let, them know, let you know where they stand. I, I'm just sick of it. We cannot continue down this road. And, uh, and, you know, why is the urgency? Well, all of a sudden we've got money in there for, for Taiwan, and I think there's some Tic Tac. There's, there's just a blank check to the World Bank of, a hundred, of several, several billion dollars. Why is that? You know, it's just the big boy. And, and who's, who's for this? Primarily the donor class. The donor class is for this. Um, you know, we're borrowing money. Extends everybody's portfolio very nicely if you're invested in the war machine, which a lot of people on both sides of the aisle are. And I'll remind folks, when we gave our missile defense system to Ukraine, who owned stock in our missile defense companies, but members of both parties, and who bought stock just about a week prior to that? Members of both parties um, did that. And, and so, and their stock portfolios increased. And, you know, it's got to stop. We have got to quit funding all this craziness. What are your personal thoughts on how Mike Johnson has handled all of this? I mean, he's had a, a tough couple of weeks. He was the deciding vote uh, against, you know, what American citizens want when it came to FISA, wanting, you know, the FBI to have to get warrants. Um, and then now pushing these foreign aid bills. What's going on with Mike Johnson and how do you currently feel about him? Do you support a motion to vacate? Well, if we vacated the seat, let's be honest, all we'd be doing was handing the, the gavel to some Marxist Democrats because that's who would control it. 
that they would have every every body that we have from you, the White House, Senate to the House. So, no, I don't support that. And the reason I don't is because it would just hand it over to them. I think Mike Johnson is a good guy. I think he's honest. But I think he's been terribly misled on this. I guess, and, um, I guess I would ask, though, what has Mike Johnson done that's been better than what we would have gotten with Democrats these past couple weeks? Well, every uh, you you don't see Marxist policies coming to the floor outside of FISA. Um, you wouldn't see uh, you would see taxation increase. You'd see regulation increase. I mean, they would just it would be a, like Grant through Richmond, brother. It would just it would go very fast because what you're seeing now is the Democrats are putting out their. I mean, the Easter Sunday transgender thing. I mean that. That is an indicator. They had a green light. It was uh, it was done intentionally. It sent a message, and they will do it, they will do more than send a message um, if they get control of it, and they will because you've got Republicans in in districts that that Biden won. Some of them, I think, up to fifteen points up in New York, and um, and yet we've um, we'll just turn that, and, and they'll be forced to vote for a coalition type speaker and it'll be Hakeem Jeffries and we will lose control of this country completely. So what are the odds that like, what, what percentage are you giving that this foreign aid ends up going through? Oh, I'd say it's going to go through the big money boys want it. And you know, the, the Pentagon's pushing it. The intelligence people are pushing it. You know, you get pulled into the skiff and you're told, it's the end of the world will ha- will happen. You know, we're looking at. I mean, let's look at the the GDP of Ukraine. It's California swamps it. Tennessee it has a higher GDP in Ukraine. You're talking about a very small country, yet Ukraine, California's GDP is ha- higher than Russia. So. You know, what what is the urgency over there? Why is this our war? Why are we not more concerned about other areas of the world? Uh, there's a lot of questions. It's it's a, it's a lot of shady things going on, in my opinion. Well, I and and, and I wonder it's uh, does does 60 billion to Ukraine make a difference in, in their war effort? Is that going to be the difference between them defeating big, bad Russia? And then as far as the funding for Taiwan, we we say we don't support, you know, as the administration says they don't support a, an independent Taiwan. Uh, they say China's not an enemy, but then at the same time we have to fund Taiwan. Can can you make that make sense? No, you can't, and that's exactly. And do you think all these, as I call them, war pimps, because they are that's what they are. They're just they're pushing a war. And um, do you think where are they going to be? when uh, China moves on Taiwan, are they going to, do they want to get in an armed conflict with China? Is that what they're going to, is that what they're going to be for? No, they're going to, Oh, we got to, we got to use the power of the UN and all this other garbage. This, this whole thing stinks. This town is not a swamp. It is an open sewer and American public. This is what happens when you elect moderates and liberals to Congress. This is where we're at. They don't, they're afraid to go against the the ruling class, and they're just going to vote us into bankruptcy. No, it certainly feels that way. Now, Mike Johnson did say, and he went on CNN of all places to defend this foreign aid bill. Uh, he went on CNN and he said, you know, if we pass this, it actually sets up the next president uh, in a good way. Do do you think that this foreign aid being given out uh, on, on the taxpayer dime is going to set up a presidency for Trump that puts him in a better position? Only if his plan is to spend a lot more money because it never ends. Because you got to realize our first that hundred and sixteen billion, we are paying people's pensions over there. Their pensions, not it wasn't buying all bullets, and and that's exactly what we continue to do. And then who who do you think will be responsible for rebuilding that country? The American taxpayers. That's who. Well, and I'm sure that there's some investors licking their chops because there's a lot of money in the rebuild. Oh, 100 percent, man. And then, of course, you got to, hey, we got to replay. And then, they, you know, these these economists, I mean, these are these are college educated people that are generally against war. 
but they're saying, oh, but 40 to 50 percent of that money is coming back here. By, we're, they're going to buy our armaments. I mean, you know, that's we're borrowing money to give to our industrial military complex. That just, to me, it just doesn't make any sense. It's just, it reminds me of my, when I was in the state legislature years ago, I spent 16 years in the legislature, and we get in these meetings and these guys were just, were just wringing their hands because they were afraid that, you know, they were going to have to raise taxes and all. And so they would always vote to increase the amount of money that they thought that the, um, the, uh, that the economy was going to grow. And, uh, you know, all they wanted to do is get through the next election cycle. And you had some brave people on both sides that warned against that. And uh, but generally, that's that's the way it went. The people were just concerned to get through the next election cycle. Screw the state. And that's why these people are. Forget the country. Don't do what's best for our economy or our grandchildren. Just do what's best for your immediate future. Yeah. It, and it, until you realize, too, it, it's past primary day for most in most of these races. So nobody can get in and run against them. And nobody's going to bring this up in two years. No, and we're going to have the same records and liberals running this country. This will be this will be memory hold in weeks, let alone two years. Yeah, it ain't, it'll be. I used to say when I was in the mayor's office, there's going to be another wreck on the interstate tomorrow, boys. And something will, you know, it always go a different way. Hey, while I have you on the phone, I, I would be missed if I didn't ask you about Israel retaliating on Iran last night. It seems like yeah. Iran is downplaying the strike. Uh, Israel, it seems happy with the strike. Is that a best case scenario to avoid World War III, where it just seems like everybody can kind of be like, okay, we're we're even at this point? Well, first of all, it was never going to be World War III. Most of the Middle Eastern countries know that Iran is a bad actor. They're off the chain. And the only reason they're back in business is because Joe Biden allowed them to get back in the oil business. Under Trump, they were... Um, they were literally a bankrupt nation. They're cranking out about two and a half million barrels a day. 80% of China's oil consumption, of, of what I was told, was is coming from Iran right now. You know, it's just it's just bad policy on our part. We, we there's a they removed the embargo on those those drones, and that's what they use. But there's a lot of thought, I think, into the. Um, so what I think is they were they were testing the Iron Dome, and they were trying to deplete its supply. And their test, you know, if they were, if there was a, um, a an outcome that, that could be measured, it was the fact that 99.9% of what they shot at Israel was shot down a long time before it got into Israel. And, um, and, and, and what Israel shot at Iran got into Iran. And they know it. They know it. And they know they better watch themselves. Well, hey, I know you got to run. I know you have a big, important vote. Uh, if you want to call back and give us an update when you guys are done, you are more than welcome to. Um, and, and But I do want to say uh, I saw your statement on Twitter last night. I did not know uh, how many uh, elected officials have been affected by cannibalism. Um, and yeah. when, when you posted that tweet saying your brother was also eaten by cannibals, I wanted to send our condolences from WTN. Well, thank you. My brother actually contacted me last night, so I, I may have misspoke like the president did. But uh, <laughs> it's a miracle. Uncle, hey, that, that's, hey, that's my next T-shirt. Is it's going to say I ate Uncle Bozy. <laughs> that's amazing. I said to my producer, I said, I said, uh, you know, there's a, there's a headline from the New York Post says White House admits Biden uncle not eaten by cannibals. I said if I, I want to frame this tweet because I feel like that's the one headline that really encapsulates what these last few years have been like. Yeah, 100%. And the thing the national media still covers for this guy, you know, they've got so much invested in him. They've got to, and, you know, and I guess that's the only thing, but the American public isn't buying it. And also the reason they're going so hard left, they've lost every, every group, every, every, every poll I've seen is how they're, they're, they've diminished. And all they've gotten in, that's why they're doing all this crazy radical stuff is because they got to ensure that that far left Marxist base is at the polls. Well, and there's there's too many competing ideologies underneath the Democrat umbrella. Yeah, I agree with that, 100%. Hey, I, I appreciate you, Congressman. Uh, how are you going to be voting today when it comes to the rules on foreign aid? Right now, I'm leaning towards voting against the rule. And um, I, I would individually, though, I'd vote for Israel's. 
paid, but I, I've never voted for any Ukraine money, and I'm not, I don't plan on doing it right now. I appreciate you. That's Congressman Tim Burchett on the Newsmaker Hotline on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Congressman. Thank you, brother. See you. Bye. Bye bye. It's 921 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at Busy Bee. Uh, you know, you hear me telling you, you got to get that annual maintenance or you're waiting for a problem to pop up. I have to be honest with you. I was late to getting my annual maintenance and I found myself with a problem with my AC unit. So what did I do? Well, I, I knew what I needed to do. I called Busy B right away. I didn't say, hey, it's Chris Ann from WTN. I just said, hey, this is Chris and Murphy's bro. They were there in less than an hour. That's what happens when you're a BI member. You get that front of the line service when problems arise. And if you're not getting that annual maintenance, well, problems are going to arise. So if you need that annual maintenance, call Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. If you need to replace your AC because it went out at the end of last season and you've been kicking the can down the road, summer is fast approaching. And the heat is going to be here and it's going to stay here. And if you need to replace that AC, do it now because you're not going to find a better value on replacement systems. My friends at Busy Bee will offer up to 12 months with no payment, no interest with approved credits. And it'll pay in so many ways to make sure you're a Beehive member. You'll get that thorough annual maintenance on your plumbing, heating, and air systems. No overtime charges 24-7 and 10% off all repairs. As a Beehive member, I enjoyed that 10% off repairs when I neglected my annual maintenance and I needed my, my buddy Joe Henry to come through and uh, fix my AC unit just a couple days ago. Plus, Busy Bee will always come see you on Saturday. They have those convenient availability hours so you'll never be left dealing with a weekend without your AC. Busy Bee, your Rude Pro partner for satisfaction guaranteed. Call Busy Bee Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling at 615-775-7833. That's 615-775-7833 or online at BusyBeeHVAC.com.
got a crash blocking the left shoulder 65 southbound right after the I-24 north exit. Here in Middle Tennessee, we've got a heavy police presence in one particular neighborhood and the entertainment world mourning the passing of a Nashville Christian vocalist. And Israel strikes back. These stories and more at 930 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. You guys got any big plans for the weekend? Nah, not really. No, I'm going so. I'm going to the movies. Ah, there you nice. go. Nice. Yeah. What you seeing? Uh, cannibals ate my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> This is a true story. It took place in a primitive corner of the world. My Uncle Bosey was a hell of an athlete. They'd tell me when he was a kid. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came along. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. And he got shot down in New Guinea. One by one, they fell. And now he was alone. There were a lot of cannibals, for real. Guinea. Trapped in a hell of Stone Age creatures. And, and New Guinea. And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there a lot of cannibals for real. Perversion and sudden death were the way of life. For real. I can't, I can't wait. It's yeah. rated It's rated R, so I wouldn't gotcha. bring the kids. Can't bring the kiddos. Can't bring the kids, but I got my <laughs> tickets online. It's 930 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Nine thirty on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. We've got clouds, but no threat of rain or storms. Full forecast coming up in two minutes. Israel striking back on Iran. A senior U.S. official confirming Israel launched retaliatory strikes inside Iran. I say confirming. I should say ABC News says that a senior U.S. official tells it that Israel launched this attack. It comes less than a week after Iran launched more than 300 missiles and drones in an unprecedented direct attack on Israel. Here in Middle Tennessee, News 2 says a person's barricaded inside a home in Smyrna following a shooting this morning. Multiple offers that officers there on Clear Circle Drive called to that residence around 6 o'clock this morning. Heartbreak in the entertainment industry. Christian vocalist Mandisa has passed away. Her public relations team put out a statement saying she died at her home in Nashville yesterday. She was 47. That's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News. Hey, it's Chris Hand for my friends at USS United Structural Systems. We got rain coming through. It's, it's, it's not ideal, but it is the perfect time to see if you have water coming into your house. And if you do have water coming into your home... The United Structural Systems guys are your waterproofing experts, and they've been doing it in Middle Tennessee since 1994. So when the rain comes, take a look around your house. Maybe you're going to notice standing water in your crawl space. If you haven't been down there in a while, poke your head down there. Maybe you see wet basement walls or cracks in your basement floors. If you see any of these signs, that's your house trying to tell you something. And the guys at USS will come through, take a look, and then come up with a unique custom solution for your home to make sure that water doesn't get in. They've been doing it again since 1994, and they have 25,000 satisfied customers. Waterproofing is one of their specialties, but it's not all they do. They can help you in so many ways, from foundation repair, structural repair, to concrete lifting or sinkhole repair on your property. Just give them a call today, and they'll come up with a solution for you. 615-488-7855. That's 615-488-7855, or online at USSTN.com. The guaranteed offer is the easiest way to sell your home. It's really simple. We bring you an all-cash offer, you close in as little as 21 days, no home inspections, no lockboxes, no open houses. Go to MarkSpain.com to get a guaranteed offer and start packing. Hey, what's up guys? This is Matt Murphy for Members Nutrition. I want to tell you about the Members Nutrition difference and I want to encourage you to go over to the Members Nutrition website. Number one, they believe at Members Nutrition that they can sell vitamins and supplements at a lower cost point and they're doing it every single day at MembersNutrition.com. Number two, they want to make these products right here in the United States of America, not from some overseas company, and they do that every single day. I encourage you to go to MembersNutrition.com. You'll get 50% off your purchase price 
at checkout. You don't have to put in any codes. Just go to membersnutrition.com. Once again, membersnutrition.com. What an absolute mess. Hey, it's Dan Manderson. Look at my closets. Unorganized to say the least. Even my window dormer is a train wreck. Stuff is everywhere. Now, luckily, California Closets is coming to my rescue. My personal design consultant, Vince, stopped by, measured, and is now showing me how to become more space efficient and organized on his 3D CAD system. It is amazing. And soon, my space is going to be organized. And yes, even Bandit approves. California Closets, a local company that can customize the storage in any room of your house. California Closets, what can they do for you? Find them online at californiaclosets.com and reach out for your free in-home consultation. I started to work in the early 60s. And Tennessee had a tear stocking program already in place going, primarily from Clarksville Base mm. within the Fort Campbell area. From that area, a lot of deer were stocked in middle and west Tennessee. And then later on, we started taking deer from those areas and stocking other areas. So it was a progression. It moved pretty fast. The deer sometimes were faster than the stalkers were. <laughs> I bet that was pretty exciting trying to trap those deer and move them and know that you're making a huge impact. Well, we wasn't all that confident. Oh, really? <laughs> Because a lot of the counties had dog problems, you know, they'd, they'd be wanting to dog the deer and it didn't hold up under that kind of pressure. And we had to go back in and restock. And there was a lot of different types of law enforcement work that had to be done. And, I hear you. and the officers did a good job. And, and we talked to a lot of the judges and they, they clamped down pretty hard on somebody poaching deer out there. Back then, we only put out 15 or 20 deer. It was critical. In fact, at that time, it was it could cost you your truck. Yeah, It's an amazing success story. You hear folks saying, well, we didn't see a deer when I was a kid, and now you just have to walk out your back door and you got in a subdivision grazing or driving down the interstate highways or whatever. You see a deer just about every day. Yeah, sometimes I wonder if we're too efficient. <laughs> Some folks say back in the good old days, but I don't know. Right now, hunting and fishing is really good. I never thought I'd see a sign when I'm going through a, a, a neighborhood or a, a rural town in, in the West or Senate to see big signs that have a Trump sign in the middle that says F. Biden and having a little kid standing with his middle finger, seven years old, eight years old. Well, I promise it happens all the time. <laughs> it wouldn't shock me if that happens all the time. Also, wouldn't that be a time for, like, a little bit of reflection? <laughs> Don't you think? It's a seven-year-old's fault. <laughs> is he victim-blaming? Victim <laughs> that's have a Trump sign in the middle that says F. Biden and having a little kid standing with his middle finger, seven years old, eight years old. Well, I promise it happens all the time. Uh, I'm just glad Uncle Bozy's in here to see this. He would... <laughs> 
He would be very upset. It's Super Talk 99.7 WTN 937. My name is Chris Hand. Thanks again to Tim Burchett uh, for, for stopping by the show. He totally uh, did not catch my joke. Right over his Maybe head. Maybe it didn't land. I said, uh, so Congressman Burchett's on the phone. I, I made sure to tell my producer it's pronounced Burchett. And he said a little bit mad at me. He's like, it's Burchett. Like, no, 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 I know, I know. <laughs> so that was my first joke that didn't land today. Yep. Uh, if you noticed, we weren't on the Amigos. Did you yeah, notice that? Yeah, I, 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 the absence of Chris Hand was well, very so they, noticed. They just, they had, they'd fill on. But I had another joke that probably wasn't going to land today. <laughs> and I think this is why I got kicked off the Amigos. <laughs> So Dan had said to me yesterday, he's like, hey, Phil Williams is coming on. We should do something light and fun for the Amigos. So you know me. I like fun. Light and fun? Your middle name? That's what, I, that's, that's, this is, that's what I'm about. So I said to Dan, I said, uh, I texted him late, past his bedtime, for the record. I said, uh, I got the best idea for what we do with Phil Williams. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I'm going to ask him if he likes music. And then, you, Dan, you'll jump in and be like, don't, Chris. I'd be like, no, no, no. Come on. Phil has to like music. <laughs> and, and I'd go to him in. And then I'd say, have you ever heard of Trump the Don? And he would say, of course not. I'd yeah. say, let's play. I want to get your reaction on on Trump the Don. And then we would have played. They call me racist. <laughs> Fake news. But Kodak Mazo, I got love for my Haitians. They cool. The media you're full of these federal agents. Break rules. So then I would have said, I would have, I would have said, what do you think? And he probably would have been horrified. Yeah, it would have been. <laughs> that would have been your response. So I got a text from Dan at 6 30. He's like, hey, uh, we're not gonna do the amigos today. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, turns out we got too much stuff to cover. We got we got too much stuff to cover. <laughs> I thought it would have been fun. Uh, the The White House walked back claims that Joe Biden's uncle was eaten by cannibals. I want to frame this tweet from the New York Post where it says, "Oh yes, White House admits Joe Biden's uncle was not eaten by cannibals." It it sums up. The entire uh, three years that we have suffered through the Joe Biden regime. So well. And this week alone for Joe Biden has been absolutely horrendous. So he did Scranton, Philly, and Pittsburgh, and it took him an entire week. I, I want to point out uh, Donald Trump could have done Scranton, Philly, Pittsburgh in one day. He could have. Uh, and he could have drawn much larger crowds, and he would have crushed it. But it took it took Biden a whole week to do three cities, three stops. And in that week, he falsely claimed twice that his Uncle Bozy was eaten alive by cannibals in New Guinea. He uh, tried to emulate Trump's impromptu visits at Chick-fil-A and at the bodega in New York. He tried twice uh, at a Sheets and at a Wawa, he failed both times. And at the Wawa, uh, it was it was basically exposed that the entire thing was so pre-planned that even even the cashier getting a cash tip from Joe Biden was planned beforehand. It was so inauthentic and awkward. But the the Biden camp quite literally got caught faking this Wawa visit. He got caught. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. L listen to this. This is this is audio from right before Joe Biden walks into the Wawa where he's going to do this little impromptu stop a la Trump. He's he's trying to copy what Trump does and this is this is what it sounds like at the Wawa. Did you hear that? So there's a manager, he's pointing how this is going to work, he's pointing at the door, he's pointing at that, and he says, David, he's, he's going to hand you a cash tip, so take it. David, he's going to give you a tip, so just take it. David, he's going to give you a tip, so just take it. And then there's another awkward minute uh, of nothingness, and Joe Biden walks in. Hey. Hello, sir. How are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, man? Good. How are you doing, man? Joe Biden fumbles around. He, he gets uh, his, his pre-called-in order. He doesn't order anything himself. And 
Then he fumbles with a box until he makes his handler carry it. And he leaves. The difference between Trump's uh, Chick-fil-A visit, Trump's bodega visit, and Biden's Sheets Wawa visits couldn't be any more apparent. I mean, listen, just this is this is Joe Biden's Wawa visit. Yes. All right, and this is a tip for you. I know oh. it's all okay. Thank you so much. The milkshakes, we have refreshers. How we about, also how have about a milkshake? Black and white. A black and white milkshake? We could perfectly make that for you, sir. So if you actually like to, right over there where it says order here, you can order it to your specification again. That includes whipped cream and other toppings as well. All right. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Thank You're you welcome. so much. It's been a pleasure. Mr. President, I'm going to pick up a few pounds here. Biden's fumbling with a box. We also included drinks for you as well. Just Excellent. We can take that box. You can take that box? Yeah. I'm going to go order a okay. milkshake. I'm going to go order a milkshake. It's so quiet. It's so inauthentic. It's so sterile. Compare that to Trump's Chick-fil-A visit. Look at the way you hold. You like each other, right? <laughs> I, I think that's very nice. Have a good time. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. We're going to load 30 milkshakes. We'll give them out to the people and we'll take some for ourselves, okay? Good. Thank you very much, everybody. Hello, everybody. Get ready for a milkshake. You got plenty of them. All right. This is an original from 2016. Oh, I love this guy. He's, hot. He's signing hats. Do you have a pen for me? Give me a good one. He's meeting people. That's your, that is the original, huh? 2016, Cleveland. People are smiling, having fun. There's a crowd. See? You knew what was happening. You got it. That's cool, man. What's your name? Lawrence Rick. Okay, Lawrence, let me get this pen out of here. Come here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. How are you? How are you? Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see everybody. How you doing, Trump? I'm doing good. I love you, man. The energy in both of these clips are so different. One is just so fake and inauthentic. The other is real and you can feel the excitement from people that are meeting the former president i don't think you felt any excitement in the wawa or the sheets visit at all so biden has these inauthentic impromptu visits he's trying to channel trump he can't do it and at the same time he's uh he's doing these campaign stops and he's butchering things he's butchering things his campaign stop uh, in Philadelphia yesterday was was something special. He started uh, by by rehashing the bloodbath hoax. And he calls for another bloodbath when he loses again. Yeah. He, oh, he calls for a bloodbath. It, let's let's keep pushing the hoax. He's not talking about the auto industry. Correct. Correct. But then Biden does Biden things. He butchers. Uh, the, the Declaration of Independence, uh, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unanali unanaliable rights, uh, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let's hear, you want to hear the updated Biden version? The idea was we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men and women are created equal, in the image of God deserve to be treated equally throughout their lives. Oh, all right. You deserve to be treated equally throughout their life. Is that how, is that what it says? Well, the image of God deserves to be treated equally throughout their life. Oh, I guess that's the new Declaration of Equality uh, under these communists and Marxists. But it it, it gets it gets worse. It, it does. It, it it always does with with Joe Biden. So well, we've cut the budget by a lot of money, 172 billion dollars so far. So don't tell me it can't be done. No, oh, we've we've cut the budget. Do you feel like we've cut the budget? And then at one point, he, there's a there's a gentleman behind him. At, at these campaign stops, I wonder what the instructions are for the people that stand behind Biden. I, I'm sure it's something like at at a certain point, the president may point at you and make a claim. If the claim does not happen to be true, please smile and nod because he pointed at an individual behind him and said. Uh, uh, I'll let you listen. I see a future of the planet. We save the planet as this guy's busting his neck doing from the climate change. Literally. Climate crisis in, in America. I see a future where we're saving the planet. He turns around. He points at a gentleman behind him. And he says, like this guy's doing. Busting his neck. Saving him from, from climate change. Literally. 
We save the planet, as this guy's busting his neck doing from climate change, literally. Climate crisis in, in America. And the guy behind him kind of goes, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> and, and has this awkward smile on his face because, uh, well, he just got credited for being a hero uh, because he's the only man enough, man brave enough in, in Pennsylvania to fight climate change by himself. I see a future of the planet. We save the planet as this guy's busting his neck doing from the climate change, literally. Climate crisis in, in America. What what's happening? And then and then he had uh, he had another all timer. Choose choose freedom over democracy. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because that's America. Yes. <laughs> Choosing freedom over democracy? I don't I don't understand. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because that's America. Yes. That's America. It's been it's been quite the uh, week. Let's also uh, point out that. He chose America. He chose. He asked Americans if they were ready to choose freedom over democracy. He claims he cut the budget by a lot of money. He he also claimed at one point this week that he never spoke with anyone about the political prosecutions of President Trump. He 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 claimed his mother didn't live in Scranton since she was 1954. <laughs> he that was good. He told steel workers at one point this week that the middle class didn't build America. That's a big one. Uh, he, he falsely claimed that the United Steelworkers were the first outfit to ever endorse him during his 1972 Senate run, uh, just a couple weeks after telling the United Auto Workers the exact same thing. He's claimed that he's ahead in 35 polls. Uh, he, we didn't even get to the fact that he, he told the shower, bathroom, sink, uh, eight by ten bathroom story where he's in a towel with shaving cream all over his face and people are pounding on his door. At one point, he forgot the word Scranton, and uh, he he's, he he keeps claiming that he cut the federal deficit. It has been a week for Joe Biden, and then today, oh my gosh, the the clip of him saying, "Can you believe little kids are giving me the finger?" It happens all it happens everywhere I go. I, I can believe it. I can uh, I can absolutely believe it. You, I never thought I'd see a sign when I'm going through a, a, a neighborhood or a, a rural town in, in the West or something to see big signs that have a Trump sign in the middle that says F. Biden and having a little kid standing with his middle finger, seven years old, eight years old. Well, I promise it happens all the time. I think, I think that may be the only statement from this week from Joe Biden that we don't need to fact check. I feel like all of his other claims and inaccuracies and falsehoods, that that may be the only thing he said this week that hasn't been an outright lie or misrepresentation. I, I just, I want to point out when the president tells the truth, you know, we shouldn't just bash him for lying. We should also highlight when he tells the truth. Yeah, give him his credit where it's due, right? Let's give him his flowers. It's 951 on Super Talk, 99.7 WTN. Hey, it's Chris Hanford, Paul Winkler, and Paul Winkler, Inc. You know Paul. I know Paul. I'm looking forward to his show tomorrow. He hosts the Investor Coaching Show every Saturday here on WTN from 3 to 6. You can learn a lot from listening to Paul's radio show, but I'll tell you what, you can learn even more from a conversation with Paul. I've learned so much more from conversations with Paul. Uh, I used to listen to his show before I got my show here, and I would learn a lot from his show, but when I got here, I knew I wanted to work with Paul because his background is so extensive. He he started the Investor Coaching Show after he spent time studying under an economist who went on to win a Nobel Prize. He's an avid collector of financial planning designations. He has up to eight now, and he holds himself to the highest level of fiduciary status. Because of that, he wants to make sure I tell you I get paid when I do these commercials. I'm fine with that. I love the transparency. I don't get paid to be a client. I choose to be a client because I've learned so much from Paul. You can too. Paul and his team will educate you along the way so you never get that uneasy feeling of blind trust, and they will look at your whole financial picture 
to help you make decisions for your financial future. Your picture is going to be unique to you, and they understand that. They want to walk you through the entire process. But your step to becoming financially secure and having financial freedom in your future starts at paulwinkler.com. It starts with you setting up a 15-minute phone call. I suggest you do it today. Just go to paulwinkler.com. That's paulwinkler.com.
All right, I'm showing uh, we still got this crash that's going to be blocking the left shoulder. 65 southbound right after the 24 split. That's exit 88. Israel strikes back. A teenager charged in a deadly shooting at a high school birthday party here in Nashville. Also, fans are mourning the death of a Christian vocalist who called Nashville her home. These stories and more coming up at 10 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Hey, uh, at 11 o'clock, Lily Tang Williams is going to be joining us on the show. She was in that epic viral takedown of David Hogg when it comes to the Second Amendment. She's also running for Congress in New Hampshire. Looking forward to that conversation. Plus, it's an agenda-free Friday until then, my friends, which means anything you want to talk about, we can talk about at 615-737-9986. And make sure you're following me on Twitter, True Social, and Instagram at Chris Hand on Air. Hit the follow button. I will follow back. It's Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Ten o'clock on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Looks like any storms have moved way out of the metro Nashville area. We still could see a sprinkle or two with this cloud cover. Full forecast in two minutes. And here's Sherry Preston. Israel striking back against Iran. A senior U.S. official telling ABC News that Israel launched retaliatory strikes inside Iran overnight nearly a week after Iran launched more than 300 missiles and drones against Israel. Iran said it considered the matter settled but warned that it won't hesitate to respond further if there is another offensive. In Tel Aviv, here's ABC's Matt Gutman. Iran very quickly went from there was some sort of explosion in and around Isfahan to say, hey, Everything's okay. There were no casualties. There's no damage. It's business as usual. They're not even accusing Israel of this attack. They're saying it was from some inside infiltrators in Iran. Israel has said absolutely nothing. And I was texting with the Israeli military at 4 a.m. local. Everybody was awake. Nobody was writing us back. Isfahan, a central Iranian city home to a military base and a nuclear facility. No reported damage. Yeah, and so far no word from the White House. Here in Nashville, Metro Police charging a teenager in this morning's fatal shooting at a short-term rental in North Nashville. 15-year-old Darren Fleming charged with criminal homicide and the death of 31-year-old Barrington Moore whom police say had arrived to take Fleming home from what was another teenager's birthday party. Police say the two fought and more was shot at this short-term rental on Young's Lane. And entertainment news. Grammy Award-winning Christian vocalist Mandisa has died. Her public relations team says it happened at her home in Nashville yesterday, but they do not know the cause. Her full name was Mandisa Hunley, a native of California. News 2 says she began her career as a member of the Fisk Jubilee Singers, but gained national attention when she finished in the top 10 on season 5 of American Idol. And the video for that song you heard has more than 54 million views. That's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
10.05 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Phone lines open. It's an agenda-free Friday. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about. The news cycle this week, this month, uh, all year, has been insane. And one of the things that we find we have trouble doing is talking about every single story happening. We only have three hours a day, so we use Fridays to either... Uh, rehash or rediscover a story we haven't talked about uh, anything that's really tickling your fancy if you will we can talk about at 615-737-9986 i did uh, i did find a headline from bloomberg that i thought was fascinating do you have any idea how bad it is in new york city right now is it like can that one day it's bad it's it's <laughs> it's even worse <laughs> So we talked with Savannah Hernandez this week. She's a frontline reporter. She's on the ground in New York City. She's she's covering the Trump trial while she's there, and she's also covering illegal immigration in New York City. Uh, that that interview's been podcasted. You can find it on Apple and Spotify. She's fantastic. Savannah Hernandez at Sav underscore says on Twitter. Uh, find her. She does great work. But New York City is so bad currently. Uh, that a, a person that fled the Ukrainian war zone went to New York City and is now thinking of going back to Ukraine. This is an, huh. this is an actual headline in Bloomberg. New York City's displaced Ukrainian weighs leaving city for home, citing housing costs, crime, and dwindling resources. Almost 80% of displaced Ukrainians dream of going home, reports the UN. But that's how bad it is. That I just, I want everybody to understand that that's how bad New York City is right now. That if you flee a war zone, you, you get to New York, you go, yeah, you know, war, <laughs> the grass is always greener on the other side. Uh, the war zone wasn't so bad compared to New York City. And and the, the illegal aliens there, they, they surrounded City Hall this week, uh, about 1,300 of them. And uh, they demanded more resources. And we actually got audio from inside the city hall meeting uh, of the uh, newcomers, the new the newcomers uh, complaining about all of the free stuff uh, and complaining that that they don't get enough free stuff also. Uh, and it starts with, you know, the, the food at the shelter is not good. But at the shelter, the food, my kids cannot eat the food at the shelter. The free food that you're uh, supplying us with at this free place to stay, it's not good. We're going to need to up that. We're going to need, it's, if you're hungry, you know what I mean? If, if you're fleeing uh, a, a, a war zone or a third world country, you're claiming asylum. Do you have a right to complain when you come somewhere and you uh, take all these resources in? You get to stay at hotels. You're staying at free shelters. You're getting, uh, you know, now they're putting money on debit cards for these quote unquote migrants and newcomers. Do you have a right to complain? I find it infuriating when we have homeless veterans on the street who nobody would listen to even if they did complain. But this uh, newcomer gets a seat at City Hall to complain about the food at the shelter. And they also point out, listen, the food during Ramadan wasn't great either. And on, on Ramadan time, we couldn't eat because when you come back for on the breaks, the food is no good at all. We couldn't eat at Ramadan because when you come back for the food at breaks, you know, it's too old. It's not good at all. Because when you come back for on the breaks, the food is no good at all. It's no good. Need better food. Does this infuriate you? Because this is taxpayer money. This is federal and state. This is Joe Biden's open border. And when an olive branch is extended to the entire world by the Democrats, uh, the entire world says this is not good enough. It infuriates me when this country's $34 trillion in debt that that it seems like these newcomers are taking American kindness for weakness and all they do is complain. And it's not just the food. 
It's the fact that uh, it, you only get two months at a taxpayer-funded shelter before you have to pack up and move to another taxpayer-funded shelter. And they give us two months to stay at the shelter, and then you have to go out again with your luggages and the kids and find another place. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. Is it more difficult than staying in a war-torn country? It's like the, the Ukrainian who's like, New York is so bad, I'm going to go back to Ukraine. Well, if this is so bad, you can, you can go home. You can go home. I'm sure many Americans would support you uh, returning home. It just blows my mind, the arrogance of these people to come here and take resources, take benefits, take free housing, free food, free shelter, free medication, and then complain because we're not getting enough free stuff. Also, we need more free school for our kids. And also, I have a kid that is like 18 to 19. Until now, he doesn't have no school. I have an 18, 19-year-old kid who doesn't have free school. The taxpayers are going to have to pay for that, too. You're going to have to pay for that. That's what it sounded like when we had the newcomers versus City Hall in New York City. They don't like the free food. They don't like the free shelter they've been given. They demand better. That was during Tuesday's city council meeting in New York City. The newcomers from Africa complaining. Complaining. This is ridiculous. We have Americans who are down and out who could probably use a hand up from the system. We have veterans in this country that we could absolutely take better care of. But we choose to serve this entitled group of people who have came here and benefited, uh, have, have given no benefit to the American system. They've only taken from it. And they complain. And the border is so wide open that we're giving benefits to everyone. And it's getting so bad. These illegal aliens are actually forming highly sophisticated gangs in our country. And American citizens are the victim. An undocumented immigrant is being held in the St. Lucie County Jail, accused of being part of a Colombian theft ring that's connected to the burglary of a Port St. Lucie home. Now, police say Angel Alejandro Rojas Morales was part of a group targeting the homes of Asian American business owners. He and six others were arrested back in December after they were caught burglarizing a home in Doral. Now, investigators say Rojas Morales was directly connected to the burglary of a home in Port St. Lucie that happened a month earlier and say he confessed to stealing money and jewels from the home. Now, police say the group he's connected to used a large amount of technology to commit the crimes. I've heard this a couple times, and I've seen it in Michigan as well, where these gangs are highly sophisticated. They're using Wi-Fi jammers. They're putting GPS trackers on cars to see when you're coming and going from your home. That's insane. It's insane. And meanwhile, the newcomers say, plus uh, the resources you're giving us, it's not, it's not cutting it. It's an agenda-free Friday on the Chris Hand Show. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about it. 615-737-9986. Randall in Lewisburg, you're next on Super Talk. What do you want to talk about, Randall? Uh, I'd like to talk about the BRICS nations. All right, so Brazil, Russia, India, China, right? Correct, and up to about a total of 30 countries now. Um, so there's a lot of chaos going in our world today that, you know, you guys talk about every day. We know what's going on here with the border and everything else, but the BRICS nations, I think we need to start paying attention to them um, and the stance that they're all taking together with uh, the attack uh, on in Israel, the war going on in Israel, they're all standing united there. Um, they're also doing a lot of financial things that are uh, affecting the United States and threatening the, our monetary system, the SWIFT system. And uh, I didn't know if you had any input on that, if you had any knowledge on any of that. Um, I haven't I haven't been bent up on the BRICS nation recently. I mean, I know that there's a move to get away from the pet, U.S. dollar being the petrodollar. 
Um, I, I know that they're organizing. I, it definitely seems like we're, we're fracturing off into two groups, doesn't it? And that their group yeah. seems very united and we seem uh, in the Western world very divided, uh, especially when it comes to these larger issues like Israel, uh, like Ukraine. It's, it's a mess. It's absolutely a mess. I, I don't think it's good for the world, um, but it, it's absolutely trending in that direction. Yeah, most most definitely. Um, they're calling for the end of the petrodollar. Uh, they have more and more countries all the time that are signing on to that alliance, and um, it's going to have a huge impact. Um, there's a forming in a new monetary system. The, they're forming new ways to trade uh, cross border payments. Um, there's a lot going on right there that I think we need to pay attention to very closely. Well, I will say this: Can you blame them? You know, not when, at all. When there's when sanctions are handed down, when banking institutions are are rallying against them, it's like you're you're forcing their hand in a certain way. That's that's correct. And if you want to look a little bit closer to home about our financial security that we really don't have, uh, you need to do some investigating on the OCC, which is a government agency that monitors all of our banking systems. Uh, you can go to the OCC and find all of the information about all of the investigations and the penalties that they're dealing to financial banks throughout our country and to individuals. You can actually find um, fines that are being leveled on individuals who are head of banks or anything like that into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. And the OCC, and so is, our, the, the OCC is the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, correct? That is correct. Yes, sir. There's a ton of information there. And uh, it just shows you how we're kind of just rotting from within in our institution. Yeah. And, and we're just piling more and more debt on ourselves. What's it, a trillion dollars extra every hundred days? And I think by, yes. by, by next year, the interest payments on the United States debts will be more than our military budget. Yep, yep, that's that's correct. And there's a lot of things in this world that are going on that are affecting that every day. You know, outside of the fact that, you know, Speaker Johnson and everybody else want to keep giving a bunch of money away. But, you know, th there's things throughout the world that are happening that are compounding, you know, what I deem to be the end of our SWIFT financial system. I mean, it's uh, we're already in the position our, our housing and everything is worse than in 2008. And so uh, it, it just looks like on every level that there's a huge collapse coming. Yeah, I mean, I, I pray that that's not the case, but it's hard when you look around to not at least have your thoughts trend that way. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Hey, I appreciate your call, Randall. Thanks so much, man. Thank you much. Steve and Franklin wants to jump on this same topic. What's up, Steve? How's it going, man? Good. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. Man, this is an interesting topic. Uh, we're talking about, you know, BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China. And you can – so that's sort of the axis, right? Yep. And then you've got all these other countries, like, they're kind of on our side, Japan, uh, U.K., whatnot. I'm just going to chat about that for a minute if you got time. Yeah. What, what, what are your thoughts on it, Steve? Well, I discovered something interesting the other day that I maybe I'm just ignorant uh, and <laughs> it's very possible. But, uh, you know, we're I think obviously a lot about inflation here in the United States. It's out of hand. Uh, you can look at CPI numbers. And uh, if you trust those. Right. I mean, we know it's probably far worse than that. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it feels like the Biden administration cooks the books on just about everything. Right. And it compound, it's compounding. So, it, you know, it's like if something costs $100 of groceries this year and then 10% inflation just to use a number, you know, it's 110 The next year it's not 120 for 10%. It's, you know, 121 So it compounds over time. The fascinating thing is that, uh, okay, have you, have you followed at all, like, the Japanese currency devaluing against the dollar. Have you seen that? If you yes. Much attention to that? And the Japanese currency, if the last I read, it's it's not doing too well. It's not doing well at all. Uh, in fact, it hasn't been this weak against the dollar since like right after Hiroshima. 
Yeah, uh, currently one one, one so. Japanese yen equals point zero zero six five United States dollars. That's right. And if you look at other countries across the globe, uh, you know you can pick any any of them really. Not any of them, but Brazil, India. If you look, what's fascinating to me is with the inflation we're experiencing here and the, and the devaluing of these foreign currencies against the dollar. Uh, if, if you had asked me, well, I'll just ask you, what, what do you think? The price of, you know, to get $100 of groceries, say you're living in Brazil or you're living in Japan, we're talking about like 10 of, we're not talking about like uh, Argentina or, you know, some of these random small uh, despotic countries. We're talking about like top ten yep. GDPs in the world. I would. Would you assume? Wouldn't you assume that a hundred dollars of groceries, you can get less groceries today than you could ten years ago in those countries? You would think so, right? I would think so. I recently realized that across the world, if you're say you're living in Japan and you're getting paid in U.S. dollars. You're actually, uh, you're actually, you could just put your money in a bank account, no, uh, no interest, and you're becoming, you're beating the S and P 500 because the dollar is getting so strong, and inflation is actually pretty flat in Japan, and this is the same across most of these countries. The UK, not quite, but I think that's pretty fascinating when we're talking about these whether it's allies or BRICS, uh, it's sort of an interesting data point in that conversation. No, that is interesting, and that's definitely something I'm going to look more into. Uh, I'm going to this is I'm going to dig into this over the weekend. I think I think the BRICS stuff and the inflation stuff is is fascinating, and, and I appreciate your call, Steve. Well, yeah, can I add one thing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one one other thing the re- to kind of bring it home uh, for 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 people who are listening. The reason this is important. The reason this matters when we're talking about BRICS and, we're, oh, we're, we're so afraid that they're going to leave the dollar behind. Now, eventually, I think that could become reality, and there are some scary outcomes there or potential outcomes. But right now, the U.S. dollar is uh, – have you guys ever seen the movie uh, There Will Be Blood, the famous quote where you know, he's basically stealing all the oil – from the, his neighbors. He's, instead of buying their land, they won't sell their land. He digs under, and he says, they're like, well, how did you take our oil? And he says, imagine if I have a milkshake, and you have a milkshake, and I have a straw that reaches all the way across the room, and I drink your milkshake. That's what the U.S. dollar is doing to your, the BRICS countries, Japan, all of these guys, these boogeymen out there. The U.S. dollar is sucking them dry of liquidity, and it's fascinating. It doesn't necessarily end well. If you want to look it up, it's called the dollar milkshake theory. Uh, but thanks for having me on. Hey, appreciate it, Steve. The dollar milkshake theory. That's worth a Google. It's 1024 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand, and I want to tell you about my friends at MembersNutrition.com. Listen, Members Nutrition started with the idea that vitamins and supplements and health wellness products in general in the marketplace we're just overpriced and not affordable to anyone, uh, to to not affordable to everyone, and and even more so, a lot of these products don't have the quality and the potency, and even more, they're not manufactured here in the USA. So MembersNutrition.com said, listen, we can offer our products directly to our members, eliminate the middlemen, and then have you pay below wholesale prices for all of their products. And Members Nutrition has developed unique lines of products that utilize the purest formulations with exceptional ingredients without compromise. And they make these products right here in America. And it doesn't really matter what you're in the market for. They have it all at membersnutrition.com. It could be immunity supplements, or maybe you want to jumpstart your weight loss or a detox like their youthful cleanse by daily defense, or just general men's health, women's health, relaxation supplements. They have it all at membersnutrition.com. And when you become a member at membersnutrition.com, you get it for even lower prices. If you're in the market for vitamins, if you're in the market for supplements, don't buy them at a big box store where you don't know where they're 
coming from. Buy them from membersnutrition.com and buy your vitamins and supplements that are made right here in the USA. The website is membersnutrition.com. Anything you need, vitamins, supplements, health and wellness, is at membersnutrition.com. Democrats to the rescue. Details at 1030 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I don't like the sound of that, Ken Weaver. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of that statement I don't like. <laughs> usually, usually uh, your teases are great. That one's I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling like I need to uh, take a shower or something. Democrats to the rescue. I, I, I feel like I got everyone's attention. Who are they rescuing? Oh, well, I'll tell you here in just a minute. Can we turn down the rescue plan? <laughs> Can we? Can we say, nah. Well, there, there will be an opportunity. All right. There will be an opportunity. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to the opportunity for us to turn down the Democrat rescue plan. Don't. Sorry. Ugh. <laughs> 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 oh. What is what? This has been a weird week. Has this not been a weird week in the news? It's been one of the weirdest. So, all right. Well, we're looking forward to see what uh, the the Democrats can do to save us. Well, I don't necessarily mean saving us. Oh. <laughs> all right. It's an agenda free Friday on the Chris Hand Show. Anything you want to talk about, we can talk about. At 615-737-9986. And don't forget, Lily Tang Williams joining the show at 11.05. It's Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories, and we've got some cloudy skies out there, but no threat of storms. We'll tell you what it's going to be like during the full forecast in two minutes. Right now in our nation's capital, Democrats have helped save Speaker Mike Johnson's $95 billion foreign aid bill. 
The 316 to 94 vote sets up a Saturday vote on final passage of assistance to Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan. This package also has a component that could ban TikTok. Israel striking back at Iran. A senior U.S. official telling ABC News Israel launched retaliatory strikes inside Iran overnight. It comes less than a week after Iran launched more than 300 missiles and drones on Israel. Iran said it considered the matter settled, but warned it would not hesitate to respond if Israel retaliate, uh, retaliated. Entertainment news, fans mourning the loss of a Christian vocalist. Her public relations firm says Mandisa passed away yesterday at her home in Nashville, but they don't know the cause. The Grammy Award-winning artist's full name, Mandisa Hunley, she was 47 years old. That's the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
1035 on Super Talk 997 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. I just saw a, a video from uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren. High Chief Warren. Um, high Chief. Uh, <laughs> the High Chief. Uh, she's. What? what? Why is she the High Chief? Because she's Native American. Oh, yes, yes, yes. My fault. I'm just putting, Sorry. I'm putting some respect on that. Whoa. Name. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's be in. Put some respect on Disingenuous, that. Disingenuous, my fault. No. Why Sorry. would it be Lady Chief? Lady is it Lady Chief? I don't I should know this, right? I don't want to assume the chief's gender. So anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving right along. Uh, Elizabeth Warren says uh it's it's time to break up Apple's smartphone monopoly. Green text on iPhones, they're ruining relationships. That's right. Non iPhone users everywhere are being excluded from group texts, from sports teams chats to birthday chats to vacation plan chats. They're getting cut out. So she's just mad because uh, the, the group text stuff? So she's talking specifically about iMessages. Okay. Yeah, people are getting Interesting. cut out. My, uh, my brother-in-law... He refuses to get an iPhone. I will say this. He does mess up the group chat. I mean, there's the, the, she has a point. It is really annoying. And then, like, sometimes the videos shrink down when you're doing oh, it with, yeah. the, with the green text. Yeah. And then the links don't send the right links way. Links don't send, or, like, you react with an emphasize or a ha-ha, and it doesn't work for them. And All right. Are we agreeing with Elizabeth Warren? <laughs> yeah, wait, wait, whoa, whoa, slow down. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I didn't want that to. wasn't the intention. <laughs> She's making some good points. Cut out. Missing out on plans and conversations. And who's to blame here? The person that didn't buy the iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> right? Don't you agree? Don't we all agree? Yeah, that's it. It's their fault. It's the person that bought the droid. <laughs> Apple. Oh. No, it's, App it's Apple's fault. Okay. All right. I didn't. I was going to say my brother-in-law. I was going to say it's my brother-in-law's fault. Yeah. It's Apple's, according to uh, High Chief Elizabeth Warren. That's just one of the dirty tactics that Apple uses to keep a stranglehold on the smartphone market. Apple has used its monopoly on smartphones to lock Americans into services and amass billions of dollars in profits. Apple even takes a cut every time you use tap to pay and has blocked a new app that would have let Android users finally use iMessage and get those blue texts. I will say this. A lot of uh, Android users don't want the blue text, and they use yep. the green text as a badge of honor. No, they, they wear that with pride. Yeah. Like, they like being that chaos agent yes, in the group text. No, At they least, did that intentionally. A, a lot of the... It, just about everyone that I know that uses a droid, I'll bring up this, this yep. issue to. yep. Tell them I'm not including them in group texts, and they say good. They're like sweet, and aren't all of them like iPhone? Pfft. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. So, do we blame Apple for this? I mean, it's annoying, but she said it's ruining relationships. I haven't heard of a relationship that I've lost because of the the green text versus the blue text. Has has this affected your relationships in any way? 615-737-9986. Could, could I be with Hannah if she had an Android? Now I'm really starting to think about it. I mean, I don't know. Is the blue text what holding is what's holding us together? 5976 says, uh, you say blame the person that bought the Android. We say, Chris Hand, quit being subservient to China. <laughs> China? That's what he said. China. China? Yeah. I'm subservient to China. China? That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, a lot of people on the Members Nutrition text line says, uh, definitely the people that didn't buy the iPhone's fault. And then they went, <clears throat> super text line. Are we not? <laughs> Is the Members Nutrition <laughs> super text line? It doesn't blue text. It's green text. I think it's green text only. Oh. And that's probably iPhone's fault. I've also been accused of being an Apple supremacist. 8246 says I'm an Apple supremacist. <laughs> 1754 said on oh, the members nutrition text line uh, boy she really gets pissed when someone turns a profit don't she <laughs> yeah the, Apple, the members nutrition text line is green
Green text. Statman says Apple sucks. Uh, Linda has a comment on uh, Liz Warren. What's up, Linda? Uh, good morning. Thanks for having me. And you guys are great. And you're really funny spending so much time on an iPhone. But uh, Elizabeth Warren's pretty much crazy. And if all she's got to do is, you know, bash the iPhone and Apple, why don't you jump over on TikTok and uh, start bashing them a little bit? I'd rather give my money to iPhones and, and an Apple than I had to TikTok. But I love you guys. We listen to you just just every day, every minute of every hour. We're crazy about you. And Elizabeth Warren, she, isn't she the one that said she was an Indian? No, <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Love y'all. Appreciate you, Linda. Base you. Linda out in Westmoreland. Savage. And she, did you feel like she like cut us right to the course? Oh, like, yeah. The very top. Talking about the iPhone? You guys are so funny talking about the iPhone. And we're like, oh, okay. Thought you were just saying we were funny, but. Yep. I think she's laughing at us, not with us. Uh, Chris on the Members Nutrition Text Line says, Hey, Chris, tell Pocahontas to get a life. Get a life, Pocahontas. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting it's an interesting video to put out, uh, and she she says uh, she she has a plan. That's why last month the Department of Justice sued Apple for its broad based exclusionary conduct, and that's the right thing to do. Well, this tracks the Democrat Party, the Department of Justice that uh, they have occupied currently. They're all about inclusion. So if someone's being exclusionary, they're going to take. Quick action, decisive action. Dexter and Gallatin, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Dex? Well, I just think Elizabeth Warren is angry because she's been cut out of the iPhone tribe. <laughs> Thank you, Dexter. It's an agenda free Friday on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. We can talk about anything you want to talk about. 615 737 9986. Lisa in Putnam County wants to talk school choice. What's up, Lisa? Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm okay. I feel like I'm not quite as highbrow as those who are talking about bricks. But for me, it's much more important right now, I think. In any case, um, the idea that we should have school choice, I'm strongly for that. But I have been a teacher my whole life, loved teaching and taught English. Um, the one thing, though, that people sometimes don't understand is school choice is just the beginning of the problem. Because if you have vouchers that allow you to take your kids to the school where they're going, and I hope that we do get that, I'm one of the few teachers that supports it as much as I do, um, what's taught in the classroom is just as important. And this is an old topic, but the English classroom, I mean, parents need to look closely. And I'm not talking about things like uh, gay people and stuff like that. I'm talking about this very subtle underpinning behind a lot of the literature. Three years ago, Putnam County endorsed a, um, a publisher, Pearson, and uh, at the time, I had been in a car accident, so I was out of school for three months, and I got a chance to look over the books and the things, and the section that they chose, if I could just give you an example or two. Please. Uh, the very first text in the ninth grade, which my grandson had, was by uh, Anna Quinlan, and you may know her name because she's New York Times, the whole deal. And it was about the value of immigration and of immigrants. And there were several stories in it. And my grandson, who rarely says uh, he's not into English, he's a math person. But anyway, he said, I really don't like this story. And um, as I read through these four books through high school, it shocked me how things had changed so much. For example, in one of the texts, I think it was the sophomore text, there was a long essay called The Other, and uh, you probably know already where this is going. In the middle of that text, the man says, the writer says, it is time for the American culture to end, for us to look at other cultures. I mean, that they're more important than you, and literally comes out and says that yeah. and discusses how wrong we are. And then when you get to the senior year, I could give you example after example. This is the last one. Um, when you're studying Shakespeare, they were reading The Tempest. I'm sorry, that was the sophomore year also. In any case, when you begin the introduction to this, there's a long discussion. And the writers and editors of that book tell you that it's very probable that Shakespeare wrote The Tempest about the man who lands on the islands, and there is a creature named Caliban there. Anyway, he said, 
this was Shakespeare's resistance to colonialism, to the idea that the British culture should be spread, that they should inherit lands, that they should change into an image of Britain. And I told the students, I said, this is ridiculous. I mean, America had just barely been discovered. Yeah. Sir Walter Raleigh hadn't been dead long when Shakespeare wrote this. The whole text all the way through is filled with things like that. So what I would like to say is, as a teacher, and I have a doctorate, not in education but in English, I would love to see that school choice. And I know there are arguments about it. They say things like, where you're going to grow together into little cultures again. It's just going to teach you to go your Christian way if you choose the Christian private school. Uh, The problem is they don't, what they're offering you is so terrible. And it's not satisfying. It's disruptive. It's it's just wrong. And I went to the person who was in charge of the curriculum because I taught there for a good while. I was teaching advanced classes. So I got to choose basically what I taught. But I, I pointed several things out. She listened, taped me while I was recording me, while I was telling all this, but nothing happened. And the other problem I have is that there are so many teachers out there, they take these silly tests about can you answer so many questions about Shakespeare and stuff. But then when you get them in the classroom, they don't know how to teach. I don't know how to solve all the problems. But I do believe that vouchers is one way to sort of head us in that right direction. And I'm sorry, I didn't have anything to say about the economy and and the money. (laughs) No, no, no. I think this topic is really important, Lisa, and I I really appreciate your insight on it. And and I think that you're right in, in quite a few ways. You know, we spend a lot of time focusing on the graphic sexual content in a lot of these books, but I think that one of the one of the uh, less talked about issues is the ideological subversion that's happening in public schools as well. Well, and it's so subtle that teachers often don't notice it. Exactly. Teachers have not been in it a while. Well, you know, and and I'm sure you know, I'm sure you know as an educator how much is taken in subliminally by students. Absolutely. And, you know, the things that they teach, they once taught things like William Bradford as the Puritan settlers. They taught Jonathan Edwards as the great Puritan thinker. Well, when you look at text today, you're lucky if they offer you a tiny section from that. Instead, you get things like uh, an essay about immigration. As far as the advanced placement goes, I loved it. I loved that you had some freedom. But when they would go to take the test at the end of the year, and the tests matter because you have to pass the test to get the AP credit, the topics they wrote about were topics that were very left-leaning. A speech by Sotomayor was was one of the last ones that we did. And I once had students analyze the speech by Richard Nixon about the dog checkers. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent speech. It was written before he ever became president. It's got every technique that a good speech maker should have in it. And I was taken before the principal by um, someone at the school board who had a child in my class. And I told her, have you ever read the speech? Read it, because there was nothing in there that should anger you. But the fact was, it was a Richard Nixon, Nixon speech instead of a President Obama address. It, yeah, of course, right. It, the The ideological yeah. subversion is definitely sinister, and, and it's it's it is hard to notice if you're not looking for it. I appreciate your call. As far as school vouchers go, and, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I know you pay attention to a lot of the headlines, Mac, as you do the news in the afternoons. But yesterday, if if I'm reading this right, the Tennessee lawmakers approved a state budget that includes 144 million to create the statewide school voucher program that they're still working to pass, but the voucher bill is stuck in finance committees. Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally said it was premature to declare the bill dead. Have you heard anything else along those lines? I believe that is what I've heard as well. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yep. Yep. So at least, at yep. least we're on. I know everything changes so quickly. Um, and then as far as the books in schools, we had a fantastic interview uh, with John Amanchukwu, who is a a pastor, and he goes to school board meetings to talk about the books that they're having in your kids' libraries. Uh, You can find that on Apple or Spotify uh, in the podcast section. Just search for The Chris Hand Show. But 
John Machukwu talks about this stuff all the time. I'm here to address a book today entitled Push by Sapphire. The real name is Ramona Lofton. If you think that this is necessary content in a library, you're either a punk or a pervert. When will this junk be removed? And they silenced my microphone because children shouldn't hear that. If you're going to review a book and keep it in your system where kids can read it, what's the difference? The people that we should protect the most, the children, we keep the content available for them. There's judgment upon this nation. We live in a day where we're now even arguing about whether or not the Bible should be allowed in the library. We gaslight people and we talk about all of this stuff pertaining to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, if diversity, equity, and inclusion means that children must be perverted, we need to gut it and get rid of it. We claim to know the God of the Bible, right, the but we seek no we need to Decorum. Decorum is removing the trash. Decorum is not censoring me for reading what you have permitted to be educational. You are a hypocrite, Lord. Can, the crowd can never shut up. You want to know why? Because we have truth on our side. And the Bible says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. It also says that righteousness exalts the nation and sin is a reproach to any people.
Nashville Mayor Freddie O'Connell's final transit plan just released and how he wants to pay for it. I'll tell you about it at 11 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Ken Weaver. It is Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand. Hey, in a couple minutes, we're going to be joined by Lily Tang Williams. She is running for Congress in the live free or die state of New Hampshire. Very excited to speak with her. And if you if you recall, she went viral last week for an epic takedown of David Hogg, uh, the the man who was involved, not involved, at the Parkland shooting, has gone on to become a huge gun control activist. She took him down in a viral video that is epic. We're going to talk to her about this on the way. Oh, hang on one second. This is Lily Tang Williams taking down David Hogg. Hi, my name is uh, Lily Tang Williams. Welcome to my live free or die state. Actually, I am a, a Chinese immigrant who survived communism. And uh, under Mao, you know, 40 million people were starving to death after he sold the communism to them. And 20 million people died, murdered during his cultural revolution. So my question to you, David, is that can you guarantee me, a gun owner tonight, our government in the U.S., in D.C., will never, never become a tyrannical government? Can you guarantee that to me? There's no way I can ever guarantee that any government will not be tyrannical. Well, then the debate on gun control is over because I will <laughs> never give up my guns. Never. Eleven o'clock on the dot. I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. We've got some clouds, but a severe storm threat is gone from Middle Tennessee. Full forecast in two minutes. Nashville Mayor Freddie O'Connell just released his final transit plan. And perhaps the most important part of the program is we know how we can afford it with an extra half cent of sales tax. O'Connell says that's a quarter for every $50 you spend, $70 per year or less for an average family. The Choose How You Move package will go through a process to get the public input before approval from Metro Council in time to get it on the ballot, filing uh, that necessary paperwork by August 22nd. Almost 60 percent of this plan focuses on expansion and enhancement of WeGo bus services. Now let's check in with Sherry Preston on the situation between Israel and Iran. U.S. military officials say Israel launched three missiles overnight on Iran in response to the missile and drone attacks on Israel last weekend. In Tel Aviv, ABC's Matt Gutman says Israel told the world it would decide when and how to respond. There was a lot of pressure internally on Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu to act, to do something, to respond somehow to that unprecedented, historic salvo of ballistic missiles from Iran to Israel. Literally in the history of warfare, there has never been a single salvo of ballistic missiles, which are up to 50 feet long, in warfare. So it was unprecedented. Israel felt it was incumbent to act. The White House has said that the U.S. would not participate in any retaliatory strike. But that said, the U.S. has stressed and shown that it will come to Israel's defense. So the big question now, should Iran decide to strike back against Israel, will the U.S. be forced? That's Mary Bruce reporting. Elsewhere in our nation's capital, Democrats have helped save Speaker Mike Johnson's $95 billion foreign aid bill. The 316 to 94 vote sets up a Saturday vote on final passage of assistance to Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan. It also has a component that could ban TikTok. That's the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
Hi, my name is uh, Lily Tang Williams. Welcome to my live free or die state. Actually, I am a, a Chinese immigrant who survived communism. And uh, under Mao, you know, 40 million people were starving to death after he sold the communism to them. And 20 million people died, murdered during his Cultural Revolution. So my question to you, David, is that can you guarantee me a gun owner tonight? Our government in the U.S., in D.C., will never, never become a tyrannical government. Can you guarantee that to me? There's no way I can ever guarantee that any government will not be tyrannical. Well, then the debate on gun control is over because I will <laughs> never give up my guns. Never. That's Lily Tang Williams. She is a, a Chinese immigrant, now U.S. citizen, whose parents suffered under Mao's cultural revolution and communist dictatorship. She is fighting for freedom in New Hampshire and running for Congress, and she is ta joining us now on the Newsmaker Hotline. Lily Tang Williams, welcome to the show. How are you? Well, thank you for having me. This is great. Probably I'm first time on... Um, some radio show in Tennessee. I love this state. <laughs> well, we uh, we heard what you did with David Hogg, uh, and it was absolutely amazing. Did you did you expect to receive that much attention from that clip about gun control? No, because uh, I mean, I just went to Darkness College. That's in my school, you know, my congressional district, and my friend uh, Spike Cohen and got me a ticket. It was sold out actually to the public, and uh, so when, when it's time to come to question answer session, I just thought, you know what, I will ask my question. I just did not know that uh, has gone viral before I even left left the dinner that night. <laughs> and uh, well, I mean, I'm asking him actually honest question, and he actually gave me an honest answer. I have to give him credit like that. He did not lie. He cannot guarantee that. Then I, in my mind, then debate is over because, uh, you know, our rights, natural rights, um, pre-existing government. I'm not going to listen to any government, no matter what, you know, um, you know, bills they sign, um, laws they pass. I have the right to defend myself, my family, my property, especially founding fathers intended against the tyranny. So... I said, I'm not, never, never going to give up my guns. I've been fighting against gun control for 11 years now. I, I so love that's it. Just and, my record, yeah. And, and you have a very unique perspective on what's shaped your views, especially on gun control. Uh, you were raised in China, and, and your parents suffered under, under Mao's cultural revolution. How did that shape you in, in your journey to becoming an American citizen? Well, I was uh, um, 12 years old when Mao died. I was totally brainwashed. I thought he was godlike. And uh, even though we were living in poverty and food rationing and, uh, and had to catch rat to eat and um, satisfy my hungry stomach, and when he died, uh, that's when my first time started to ask a question. He's a human, not God, and who lied to me and my entire generation? And uh, I went to college to study law to search for truth. And that's when an American student introduced me to the Declaration of Independence. You know, all men are created equal. I have an individual right and liberty. It gave it to me by my creator, not by any government. And I got to know Second Amendment right. My light bulb came on, never turned off. And I managed to come to this country in 1988 as a foreign student legally. And I thought I would just be living in a free country under freedom, prosperity, live my American dream. But it's no longer the case anymore. I have to get involved. I have to tell my stories. And this country is going down the wrong path. And I need to come out as an American citizen. It's my duty to sound the alarm and to fight for our rights and liberties. And if I have to speak like this from the floor of U.S. Congress, I think I can make a huge impact. We're talking with Lily Tang Williams. She's running for Congress in New Hampshire. She had a viral takedown of David Hogg. You, you, so having your views shaped by growing up in China, do you see any red flags that America is becoming a communist nation? And what would those be? Well, the terms and the tactics they're using are very terrifying. 
and uh, started under Obama, and they wanted to transform America fundamentally. And we see the expansion of government. I was fighting against the Common Core centralized education, indoctrinated indoctr- our kids, and then later get worse and worse. In the past three years, I see this, uh, you know, government basically is weaponized and to um, um, during the pandemic to mandate everything, to shut down business and churches, and uh, they build M and Tifa rioters. They remind me of Red Guard during the Mao's Cultural Revolution. Uh, you know, it, it's like they are so virtue signaling and violent, but you're not supposed to ask the questions. They use the term and the words, they redefine the definitions, and they want to the silence voice to be all censored. I was censored too. So I see Americans, these, you know, sometimes they have to self-censor so they don't and get a co-op and bad names and label them racist and, you know, whatever. It, it's very scary that uh, our government is using identity politics by the politicians and by the, you know, legacy media to get us fight each other. And, and I'm not talking about Twitter files, the censor decent voices. I think that's what the Chinese Communist Party did. And I could not have a freedom of speech. So I cannot be censored in this country. And I have to speak up. There's uh, so many things they're doing today uh, and the uh, weaponize even justice system to go after dissidents and in a political prosecution. I, I'm, I'm worried for our country. What would you what advice would you give to the average American citizen on how to combat this influence? Well, I, I always say that we need to have a respectful conversation with each other. Mm-hmm. And then politics is a communist tactic to divide and conquer citizens so we all could be enslaved if we were busy fighting each other. I, you know, they don't have to agree with me on all my policies and opinions, but that we have to respect each other and we are not each other's enemies. And the way we are entitled to speak our mind, we just don't have to agree with each other. So that's the message I'm trying to send out. I'm leaving American dream in New Hampshire and I come here with nothing. And this is the greatest country on earth. If I could come here, achieve American dream, uh, and could not speak English, 23 years old, $100 borrowed, I have three home business and wonderful family. I love this country. We have so much in common as American citizens. So we need to be aware, you know, those tactics to say, you know what? You know, let own us on that. We're not going to use that. And we're going to try to focus on common ground and save our country from those radical Marxists, uh, you know, controlling and taking over. Well, and it does seem like the radical elements have taken over when you and, and I'm sure that this hits home for you. When you look at our southern border with how wide open it is as a legal immigrant to this country, does it infuriate you when you see people crossing into our country illegally and then getting the benefits and the resources that should be going to citizens? That's insane because there are about five to ten million legal immigrants who have sponsors, have applied to legally immigrate in this country, and they are being put off and canceled. They are still waiting. I have people telling me they've been waiting for 14 years and still cannot even get a consulate interview. Where our southern border and New Hampshire, we have northern border all wide open. Our rule of law is not enforced. And there is an agenda to get those people coming in with taxpayers' um, financial incentive from our government. And what is their purpose? And uh, do they concern with the national security threat, even drug cartels? And fentanyl crisis is real. Lots of people die here in New Hampshire from that crisis. Yep. And, and how about the children, the human traffickers? So I think that the people should wake up. Our borders are wide open. Who are benefits from that? Why are they doing that? Why can they, full, you know, enforce our current immigration laws? All those good questions people got to, you know, figure out the truth and do not. You cannot vote for Democrats anymore. I think they are affecting the quality of life and as Americans here. Well, another thing that's really scary on the southern border is the amount of Chinese nationals that are are coming through illegally. We know about the control that the CCP has on its citizens. Do you worry when you see Chinese citizens illegally coming through that there could be something more sinister at stake? 
very concerning. We already have the um, CCP infiltration to our country for decades, decades, include the Confucius Institute, and include their dark money and state enterprises come here, build factories and Chinese nationals buy the farmland. And, and, and there are lots of issues we should be concerned with, with our China policy. But now we open border to the Chinese young males come here. Some have legitimate maybe reasons for political refugee status, but you don't know who they are. And they don't go through our legal port of entry to request for political refugee status. They just, uh, you know, come in through open borders. And it's a very organized. You have those Chinese shops, the restaurants, the hotels all set up, yep. you know, in, in South America. Yep. And follow the TikTok videos, the detailed instructions in Chinese how to come here. And uh, I, you know, I, I really question our current, you know, um, regime or administration. Are they still loyal to Americans? You know, we have this crisis, but they're not focused on that. And they're focused on other crises. We've covered the hotels in Colombia that are all Chinese uh, with Chinese signs, Chinese writings, and and the, uh, I believe it's WhatsApp chats that that detail how to get people uh, over the border. does Does the Chinese government keep track of everybody to such an extent that they know who's gotten out of the country, they can still keep track of them while they're here? It's not easy to escape China. Um, they, um, because we had to all get a legal permission to quit our jobs and to go apply for private passport. So those people who come in, that uh, they probably, um, some of our refugees, they just uh, you know, escaped with some help and pay lots of money. But some of them probably, you know, you don't know who are the spies, the operatives, and come here to harm for us. And we, we, we should really, um, you know, close our borders. And if they want to come here legally, I support legal immigration. I think the people who want to come here work hard and achieve, make a dream, and they're welcome. You know, my brother had to wait for 13 years in nine in China with my sponsorship to come here legally. And he, for the first five years, and the requirement for you is to work and on sponsorships, the financial support, you cannot apply for any welfare assistance. But now we are offering them to come here illegally, gave them money, gave them a free hotel, free travel, free food. And there were our second you know, class citizens like veterans and, and the other people who are poor. This is just insane. I, I, you know, people should really wake up and cannot be just uh, believe in their traditional source of information or media's narrative. And, uh, and, and uh, it's time for us to say, what has American become? We need to all start to question that. How easy is it for a Chinese immigrant, though, to kind of decouple from the CCP? I recall a story where you were uh, visited by some CCP officials after a speech. Do, do Chinese immigrants have constant contact with the CCP? Well, there's just so, you know, I, I think a few years ago, they were talking about, about 30,000 Chinese spies here, and, and the most they probably in some big blue states and cities, and because I become the public speaker for the victim of communism and moral foundation, I go to schools and, and colleges to tell my stories, so they found me, and on Facebook, they start to target me. And I do put my events on Facebook, and that one guy showed up near Salt Lake City, where Confucius Institute was located. And, and uh, um, then later, you know, he just left, never said hi to me, a Chinese young man, then told people at the table that, uh, you know, don't believe her, you know, our Chinese leaders are our fathers, they are not the dictators. So that's obvious where he stands. And uh, I recently got a threat on X to say, you know, People's Liberation Army is going to crush my doggy head. They want me to shut up. They want me not to tell my story. But, uh, you know, but uh, our state motto here is live free or die. The death is not the worst evil. I embrace that. I embrace American ideals greatly. I love it. Lily Tang Williams, she's running for Congress in New Hampshire. Lily, do you think that the current regime, the Biden administration, is compromised by China? Well, lots of conservative Chinese Americans all know the 10% uh, big guy, you know, um, is Biden. And uh, I'm sorry to tell you that uh, the, the censorship industrial complex has, 
had to suppress the story about the Hunter Biden's visit to China, making deals, getting diamonds from Chinese, you know, um, um, businessmen there as gifts, all because, you know, he's the son of the, you know, um, President Biden, or that time, vice president. And uh, so that was all, you know, suppressed before 2020 presidential election. I'm hoping that people are waking up to that to say, at least to question that. And uh, um, I don't know what happened to the investigation on that and, and about the Biden family. It's, it's very worrisome because I read, read in Chinese every day. I know what's going on. I know that, uh, you know, um, California governor went to China. The San Francisco mayor is visiting Beijing. They're making deals and uh, they're compromised and they're using taxpayers' money, so-called climate change green New Deal money to lure Chinese state enterprise come to our country and build a factory because they have the 80% battery factory, you know, like the market share. So our politics don't make sense. And they are actually giving more money and more power to the CCP regime, which is the largest totalitarian regime in the world. They are behind Iran and Cuba, Venezuela, and Russia. I just don't understand why we're talking tough about war or help Taiwan. But at the same time, we are doing quite opposite to empower China and empower their economy. So, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, people need to know that exactly the truth. So we just don't believe, you know, one side of a narrative. What do you think when you see them clean up a city like San Francisco essentially overnight for the president of China, but they, they leave it filthy for years for American citizens? Oh, I absolutely condemn that. That's what I'm saying. And um, I saw the Chinese flags. I saw the pro-China and anti-China, two groups of, uh, you know, Chinese Americans here getting into physical fight. And they were, another side were like a suck. If you dare to say free Hong Kong, support Taiwan, and the CCP is evil, then you get beat up but by another side, you know, who, who were with the, you know, CCP groups. Um, our politicians are very cozy with the CCP in our country. You know, from, even from Congress, you know, you can say that Judy Chu and Grace Meng in New York, Judy Chu in California, they, they all, you know, go to consulate and then they help them raise money to get elected. I have not been interviewed by one single Chinese newspaper since I'm running, except the Epoch Times, the NTD TV, that's the Falun Gong group. That tells you why. They have infiltrated into Chinese language media and the schools and the churches here in the U.S. That's why all the Chinese Americans, some of them are very worried. They cannot speak up like me because they're worried about going back home to visit China and, and to do business. That's why I cannot go to China. I, I got a threatened. I could not go to China to see my family friends since 2019. So I have not seen them for nine years now because last time I went back was 2015. But I put my duty first. I think of the um, truth shall set us free and uh, we cannot be scared into submission because once you give communists one inch they're going to demand 10 inches from you every american today should rise up and to say right and wrong to say black is black and you know white is white we cannot be wishy-washy we cannot think everything is going to be okay if we just submit ourselves and be silent i want the silent majority of american people rise up and to speak the truth, to push it back. And at the same time, you like each other and keep each other close and respectfully, you know, each citizen's personal value. I love it. We're talking with Lily Tang Williams. Uh, she is running for Congress in the great state of New Hampshire. She has a unique a, a unique perspective on what we're going through in our country as she was raised in Mao's cultural revolution. Lily, I, I guess the last thing I would ask for you is, is what would be your message to Americans? If you could tell people one thing to get ready for, one thing to look out for, or, or one way to fight against the communist threat, what would it be? Well, that America is an exceptional country, and lots of people want to come here and live their American dream. And uh, so that I hope our youth are educated about history, about our exceptionalism, and are not taught anti-American agenda. And then my, 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 my message to all the Americans out there, I hope that uh, we all are patriots and we all know the history. We need to be united. 
And if you like my story messages, please share them. I need the grassroots support to win this race. I don't have lots of money. There's uh, people coming in with probably millions and millions of dollars, but I have unique messages and I have unique stories. And I think that the grassroots uh, like me, trust me, because I promise them as a politician, which I'm not a career politician, I will represent them. I will speak the truth. I will never sell out. I'm for liberty, but not for sale. Well, Lily, my parents live in New Hampshire. Uh, they're in your district. I'm going to make sure that they vote for you um, because <laughs> because your message is, is so on point and people need to hear it. Um, where can we find you on social media? My audience is, is reacting on my text line saying, God bless you. We love you. How, how can people find you and how can people support you, Lily? I have my um, website called the lilytownwilliams.com. And I have a donate button there, and you can mail a check, and you can use it online. And also, I'm uh, um, pretty active on X, which is a social media, free speech social media now. Yep. I put, I'm very active there every day. I put my videos there. I put my posts there. Some get millions, millions of views. And if you want to follow me, if you don't have X account, you can also follow me on my website at the bottom of my homepage. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, I'm everywhere. I've been telling my stories for over 10 years. And so now I just feel like this is, you know, crisis year for our country at the crossroads. But I love this country and we are patriots and then we, we should, you know, really come out and get active this year. I love it. Lily Tang Williams, she's at Lily for Liberty on Twitter. Lily, I would love to have you on the show again. I think you are, you are a, a firecracker. Thank you so much. I'm a food to try, which is spicy food and make people fiery. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Lily Tang Williams on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Thank you, Lily. Thank you. Hey, it's Chris Hand for the Glock store. Sorry, I was, I was sidetracked. I mean, you hear this woman fired up about the Second Amendment. It's hard not to be fired up about the Second Amendment yourself. Uh, and you know some guys that are fired up about the Second Amendment. It's my friends over at the Glock store. They make all of their parts right here in Nashville from tungsten guide rods to pyramid triggers, and they'll install them on your Glock for free while you wait. That's what they do at the Glock store. They actually do so much at the Glock store. Did you know that they they throw parties at the Glock store too? They do. This is the truth. Uh, so they have their annual open house coming up on Saturday, June 1st. Make sure you save the date for that uh, because I'm going to be there. Matt's going to be there. Dan's going to be there. Whole crew. But did you know that they host all kinds of events from birthday parties to retirement celebrations to bachelor, bachelorette parties, team building, fundraising, all kinds of events. If maybe maybe your boss is retiring, tell everybody in the office that you have the best idea for the party. You can do it at the Glock store. The Davidson County Republican Party is holding their annual Shooting Star fundraisers uh, this Saturday, April 20th at the Glock store. And it's not too late for you to join in on that fund. They're going to have meet and greets with local Republicans. Uh, Matt Murphy's going to be there. They're going to have competitions with great prizes. And you could even win a Glock 43X just by buying a ticket. You get those tickets at GOPNashville.com. Click on Shooting Stars. And if you're thinking about throwing your own incredible event, just call the Glock store and say... I have the best idea. I want to throw a party here at the Glock store, and they'll make it happen for you. 615-682-6565. That's 615-682-6565. The Glock store, they're ready for your next event. Minutes from the airport and worth the drive from anywhere.
I'm Ken Weaver with your top stories. Got the full forecast in two minutes. Nashville Mayor Freddie O'Connell releasing his final transit plan and how he wants to pay for it this morning. O'Connell will ask voters to approve a half cent increase in the sales tax. He says amounts to a quarter for every $50 you spend, $70 per year or less for an average family. Right now in our nation's capital, House Speaker Mike Johnson on clearing a procedural hurdle, setting up a vote on a $95 billion foreign aid bill for Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan. We're happy that the rule passed today. We look forward to final passage on the bill tomorrow. Democrats helped get it through as there were some GOP defections. And in money news, Jim Ryan. Investors have shaken off Israel's overnight attack on Iran, leaving stocks mixed headed into the midday. The Dow Jones this morning was up 157 points. The S&P 500 was off off four-tenths of a percent. The Nasdaq composite was lower by 1.1 percent. That's the latest news. Weather is next. I'm Ken Weaver, WTN News.
Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Big thanks again to my guest, Lily Tang Williams, for jumping on the show. If you want to find Lily, she's online at lilytangwilliams.com, or you can go to Twitter. She's at Lily for Liberty. Uh, you can find it way easier. We, we've retweeted her a couple times from my account at Chris Hand on Air and the 99.7 WTN account. So you can find Lily Tang Williams where, wherever you're looking for. Her. Kevin in Nashville, you're next on Super Talk. What's up, Kevin? Hey Chris, this this kind of ties this both of these um both of what I'm saying is ties in with what your pre, what your guest just said and what you were previously talking about with the economy because she's coming from a very totalitarian nation. We are headed that way, mm -hmm. and the way we're getting there as far as the economy goes, um, yeah, the, the BRIC nations play a part in this because all it seeks is to drive the value of the dollar down, but um. Back in 2022, January 2022, President Biden signed the executive order to develop a central bank digital currency for this country. Mm -hmm. uh, central bank digital currency, this is a programmable currency. China already has it in place in some of its provinces. Australia is going that way. Their largest bank just said they're shutting down their physical buildings and going to a CB, central bank digital currency. Um Nigeria, for all intents and purposes, has it set up. Basically, it is a digital prison. Because what ha what happens is, with that currency, they can control your government can control what you buy or sell. Yep, and that's and what they, and that's uh, what they're trying to do. I know that uh, Trump has talked about uh, banning central banking digital currencies if he gets elected. I know Vivek has really been in his ear on that. Um, it's just another reason why we need the orange man back. I, I would I would guess. Yeah, that that is that is one of the reasons why. And but the other thing with this digital currency, you can't save it because if you say you get your I don't know your universal basic income for that month, and say you pay your bills and you have say two hundred this fall ten per say digital dollars left over, mm -hmm. it's got an expiration date on it. And say by the time your next allotment of money gets issued, whatever you had left over just evaporates. You don't have it anymore. So your government can control what you buy or sell. And this is what people ought to think about as far as those people that work for, that depend on tips. All the tips you don't report on your taxes, they'll know about it now. Yeah. When that happens. They will know about every dime that you, that you spend. And this, this stuff is coming because there's a few Caribbean nations that have it. Some other countries, um, some of your Scandinavian countries are in the process of bringing it in. And, um, and uh, last I heard, Turkey was in the process of bringing it in. There's other countries, but what they need to do is they need for us to flip because we'll drive it for the rest of the world. And the other part of this is this how it plays in the economy is this is the forward pivot strategy in action. They're dry, they're they're spending us into oblivion. We can't, it can't be paid. The interest can't be paid. And they know this and they keep spending it. But then the other thing is you don't import huge, huge quantities of pe poor people. I hate to say a welfare ready people that are going to continue to feed off the government because you, you're digging a hole you can't get out of and they know it will implode because they want it to. Yeah. And, and, and the, and, and the people that we're bringing in, uh, and I appreciate your call, Kevin, the people that we're bringing in are complaining the entire time. I mean, we had, uh, the, the newcomers in New York, they took over city hall to say, uh, we, we don't like the food, but at the shelter, the food, my kids cannot eat the food at the shelter. It's not good. Jeff and Cedar Hill has been waiting on the line to talk about FISA. Jeff, you're on super talk. What's up, man? Appreciate you holding. Hey, Hey, uh, no problem. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, Miss Williams, a hard, hard call to follow that's for sure oh my gosh lily tang williams is a is a beast uh at lily for liberty on twitter if you guys want to follow her yeah she's she's something else unfortunately we we don't have enough of those in this country we could use but, we uh, could use a hundred more lily tang williams yeah for sure um anyway my i guess uh i'm i'm retired from the military over over half my time there was in special ops and stuff and and I've been to a lot of uh, not real pleasant places. And Appreciate your service. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, the one thing they have in common, dictatorship-type government. And, uh, you know, I know we keep beating this drum, but, you know, the, the 
FISA passage ridiculous. And it doesn't apply to those in Congress. Good Lord, I, I thought laws weren't supposed to be made for the public that don't apply to Congress. But and here we are. Does it not frustrate you that Mike Johnson was the deciding vote on, on allowing that to, to move forward? Uh, more than frustrated. Uh, but yet uh, a good friend of mine, uh, another retired military, flies for a uh, an airline now. And uh, oh, boy, uh, talk about liberal. Uh, I mean, he's not at the airline. But um, anyway, they just, uh, I guess, the uh, House just passed $95 billion foreign aid. Um, you know, here again, however you sit on that, we it frustrates me because we cannot secure our own borders in our own country, but yet we're, we're spending tens of billions of dollars to secure other borders across the world. Um, yep. We had, we had 151 Republicans and 165 Democrats just vote to advance uh, Speaker Johnson's $100 billion foreign wars package. Yeah, uh, and, and believe me, I will see where those representatives in Tennessee vote, and they will be hearing from me within within a week. Yep, you um, you and me both, Jeff. Um, and uh, as far as the, uh, oh boy, the politicization of, of the DO, Department of Injustice, and the involvement of the FBI and the CIA and J6, that was set up, I believe, by the Democrats and the government to make an example. Don't you question anything about an election because this is what will happen to you. So I really fear for this next election. I, I, I am not confident this country can have free, fair elections anymore, and that pains me to say that. No, I, I hear you, man. I, let's not swallow the black pill just yet. I still, I still think that there's some hope. I appreciate your call, Jeff. Uh, our friend Tom Davis is on the line. Tom, what's going on, man? Hey, Chris. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. Uh, Tom Davis. In case you guys don't know, he's running for uh, Desjardins congressional seat in uh, uh, what what district is it? It's Tennessee's. Um, oh gosh, the fourth district. The fourth district. It's that's my district. I just drew a blank on the number. Um, what, what's going on, Tom? How's everything going? Well, well. One, I, I called in too early because now I have to follow uh, Lily. Yeah. So I'm a little sad about that. But <laughs> she's she's something else, isn't she? Oh man, that was awesome, and uh, I'm I'm right there with her. But uh, yeah, it go, going pretty good. I just wanted to call in and uh, you know give the update. So um, we've had one drop off. There's three in the race left. Uh, myself, Congressman Desjardins, and uh, Joshua James is the guy's name. Um, for me, I've been out there talking to folks. Coming up tomorrow, I'll be in Pikeville uh, for the Bledsoe County GOP Ice Cream Social. Looking forward to that one. Um, and then uh, the 22nd, I'll be in Warren County at their uh, GOP meeting, and then the 23rd in Marion County at the GOP meeting. Nice, man. How's And how's everything going for you uh, on the campaign trail? Yeah, pretty good. I, I, I enjoy answering the questions. And they're, you know, people ask, like, tough questions, and I'm, I'm happy to answer them. And I, I think we are ready for a change in this district and just trying to get the word out of how I will go up there and vote. And in particular on this, they talk about the FISA vote. Um, Desjardins did vote no for the final version of it. However, I, I would have voted no just bringing the thing onto the floor. That's some, it, So given the FBI in particular, this type of tool is like giving a toddler a knife and sending him out to the playground. <laughs> Dangerous. Yeah. So, where, so I, I would have been a no bringing it in anyway. <laughs> where where would you have been on the foreign aid bill today? I, I'd have been a no. Uh, and I, I think we're in the process still just trying to bring it to the floor. Yep. And yeah, I, no, this, this stuff has to end. Our borders are wide open. This is money we, we don't have. And let's secure our borders, get this, this spending problem we have under control. Then we can, and we can worry about stuff in Israel. All we need to do is get out of their way. Yep. They can handle their business. We're just, we're just holding them up is what we're doing. Yeah. The house cleared their, uh, a key procedural hurdle is what they're calling it in passing the foreign aid to Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan. Uh, the final votes are going to be tomorrow. Yeah. So they're going to, and they're going to stay till Saturday, but they, they took a three week break to come back and get us a continued spending resolution. I don't know. This stuff is out of control. 
And we do need new people up there, different ideas, and, and the, the status quo of what we've been doing has is, is been a horrible way of doing business. So we need to get it back. Where can people find you, Tom? I am on Facebook, Tom Davis for Congress. I am on YouTube, Tom Davis TN4. I am on Instagram, Tom Davis TN4. And I am on the X machine at Tom Davis uh, TN4. And if you would like to, to help the cause, uh, send us an email, Tom Davis TN4 at gmail.com. We can get you plugged in to, to help us make calls or whatever you would like. If they want to give, um, give financially to the cause, I would certainly appreciate that. And you can find me, Tom Davis, uh, Thomas E. Davis for Congress at Give, Send, Go. Just look me up and I'll pop up. All right, perfect. That's Tom Davis. He's running for Congress in TN4. When is the primary? What's the date for the primary? The 1st of August. 1st of August. All right, Tom. Well, keep us updated on how things are going, man. Good luck. Good to you, Chris. Thank you, sir. All right, Have a great all right. day. I right, appreciate it. That's uh, Tom Davis. He's uh, he's running against Desjardins. A lot of people, you know, want want to change there. If, if, you, if you're one of those people, uh, take a look at Tom. It's 1149 on Super Talk, 99.7 WTN.
1156 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. My name is Chris Hand, joined in studio by Cameron Smith. What's up, Cameron? Hello, Chris Hand. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm better than Mike Johnson. <laughs> it's a low bar. It's a rough day. <laughs> you know, being a speaker sure seems hard right now. Doesn't seem like the most fun job. No, no. I want to know who wants it. Other than Marjorie Taylor Greene. <laughs> Just no. Don't, don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I, I knew he would be like, yes. Chris is like, yes. No. Don't. I, I, like, I like that idea. Cam no. It's Cameron's idea. Yeah, we, we've got. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that hurts. That's hurtful. Cameron's like, dang it. When, that, when should I shut I my mouth? It. That was the first I thought of it. Um, would you prefer Gates? No. <laughs> yeah, that's no. actually the real question. Yeah, well, let's no. go. Which one? <laughs> Nope, none of the Kamikaze Caucus. Is the, is, the, is the motion to vacate happening? I, I I think I saw something like a third a third guy's jumping in. I to, saw Massey join. I don't know if somebody else. I wouldn't. Massey Massey joined, and Massey said that. Uh, he, what was the quote? He wanted he, him to pre-resign. Yeah, I like that. Uh, he said Mass, Massey implies Johnson is motivated by presidential aspirations. Dude, dude was, who was dude who was four hundredth in line Massey. to be speaker. So I'm not sure. <laughs> That there's presidential aspirations. <laughs> One at this step point. at a time. He yeah, says that, that Mike Johnson's fueled by presidential yeah, aspirations. Yeah, my point is he didn't even had a th have a thought about being speaker. So the idea that he's now like, well, I'm going to be president. president. I, Do you feel like Mike Johnson was bullied as a kid? I don't know. I know Mike, and he's a good guy. I mean, as far as he's a it conservative, just, a Christian, I mean, I'm like, sweet. Like, don't you think he talked a different game in the lead up to becoming speaker as opposed to where he's at now on a yeah. lot of these positions? Yeah, I think a lot of people do, and then they get in a position where they got to make decisions for the broader House of Representatives, and they were like, wait a minute, the stuff that was easy for me to do when I was, you know, in the Republican Study Committee or something like that. Man, that's a lot harder because I got to keep everybody together and we don't have many votes to spare. That's a tough call. It's tough. Yeah. I don't like it. Like, I would much rather that Mike Johnson and conservatives are able to do everything they want to do. But the, the problem is there are a lot of Republicans in Washington. There are not a lot of conservatives. Yep. So you got to win elections. And that's what I keep trying to help people understand is don't look at the R and think this is a card carrying Southern conservative. They're not. But until you win those elections... You got half of the Republican caucus. You got 25% of the House of Representatives that are conservative-ish. So what happens this weekend? What, where do you think we go on foreign aid? I, I, I think the bills hit the floor on Saturday, vote on Saturday evening. I think the votes pass with a pretty decent majority. It'll probably be, if I had to guess, 60 70% of the House will pass it out. And I understand why conservatives might be mad. Go win elections. I think my, my next question, my follow-up would be, how soon does Ukraine come back for more money? <laughs> Depends on how fast they shoot. <laughs> I mean, it really does. I, I give it three weeks, and we're huh. going to see Green Sweatshirt Man I back I knew you were going to say Green Sweatshirt Man. Hey, you know, when you're at war, sweatshirts, practical. <laughs> That's true. With all the money we've given the guy, he can buy a suit. <laughs> but is, do you really want to fight in a suit? Is Zelensky really doing any fighting at all? I don't know. He's definitely a good actor. Have you seen that video with the leather I, and the heels? I hope he wins. That's what I hope. I don't think that's happening. Cameron Smith, he's up next. It's Super Talk 99.7 WTN.